Hi everyone, my name is Manuel. I'm a PhD student from Nova, Nova University Lisbon and I would like to thank the organizing committee for the opportunity to be here today and for organizing such a wonderful workshop. So today I will be talking about generating symbolic explanations for recurrent neural networks. And as we know, artificial neural networks have allowed us to kind of solve a variety of different problems. However, they suffer from a lack of explainability. These are sub-symbolical models using sub-symbolical internal representations that do not have any human understandable meaning associated to them. So what happens in practice is that when such a model outputs a certain result, there is no human interpretable indication of why that output was produced. So we believe that if we want to kind of be able to discuss and reason about the tasks being performed by these models, First of all, we need a human understandable language. We need a human understandable language with meaningful concepts and relationships between those concepts. So let's say that we do have this language here represented as our background theory and an artificial neural network whose output we want to justify. Our question still remains, how can we kind of relate both systems in a way that affords us to produce symbolical justifications that are human understandable for the meaning of, for the outputs of this neural network. And so our proposal is to kind of establish a mapping between the activations of this neural network and single concepts from our background theory. And we propose to establish such a mapping through the use of what we call mapping networks. These are small neural networks trained to identify single concepts from the activations of a trained neural network. And so through, through these mapping networks, when input is fed to the neural network whose output we want to justify, which we refer to as main network, we can output observations regarding whether different concepts were observed or not in the activations of this neural network. And using these observations together with our background theory, we can reason to produce symbolical justifications for the output of our neural network. So these justifications would be minimal subsets of axioms or rules from our background theory that together with the outputs of our mapping networks would allow us to entail the output of our main network. And so when looking at this proposed method, one might start to kind of wonder about whether different languages or background theories will lead us to different justifications. And yes, the short answer is yes, but we don't find that to be problematic. You see that's similar to our human behavior. We can imagine the setting where we have two different individuals learning uh, different coordinate systems and both of them want to kind of discuss about the same given geometrical phenomenon. Given that they have learned different coordinate systems, both of their justifications would certainly differ in form, but they are still both meaningful justifications for the same subjacent phenomenon. So, Looking at this proposed method, we start to kind of wonder about which kind of results we might expect from it. And so we tested it in this extra image data set. This is an image data set made by, uh, composed of small images with representations of trains. And we trained three different neural networks to identify trains with different visual features. So for example, the first one is identifying trains having either a wagon with at least a circle inside and a wagon with, with two walls in each side or, wagon, or trains with no wagons with geometrical figures inside of them. And the two remaining neural networks are identifying kind of different trains with different visual features. And so we started by asking ourselves kind of which kind of concepts are we going to be able to extract through our mapping networks. And so to investigate this question, we define the notion of relevant concept as kind of a concept that is able to provide this information regarding some output of our neural network. And we try to extract both relevant and non-relevant concepts from our three neural networks that we were studying. And so in this image, we present a summary of our results where we highlight the results obtained by mapping networks extracting relevant concepts. And so indeed, if you look, for example, at concept D, which is relevant in the first neural network, where it is extracted with a very high accuracy, and then we look at its result in the, the two remaining neural networks, where it is non-relevant, we can see that it's extracted with a very low accuracy. 
So by looking at these results, we can kind of understand that relevant concepts are being extracted with the highest accuracy amongst all concepts. However, what we found here that was very, very interesting is that this kind of hints towards the idea that truly the representations existing inside of our neural networks are somehow related to those human understandable relevant concepts. And so then we wondered about kind of the cost of establishing these mappings, whether there was some kind of benefit to establishing them directly from the activations of a train neural network. And we compared the results of our mapping networks to those obtained by convolutional neural networks trained directly from the data in our data set to predict the same concepts. And so once again, we look at the three neural networks that we were studying. And by looking at the results, we can kind of understand that our mapping network seem to be outperforming these convolutional neural networks trained directly from the data set, kind of independently of the amount of training data available here. And especially when there was very, very limited amounts of training data. So this kind of hints towards the idea that our mapping networks require very few labeled data to train. But once again, what we found here that was very interesting is that this hints towards the idea that not only the representations existing inside of our neural networks are related to those human understandable relevant concepts, but they are nearer to them than the features existing in our data sets. So then we wondered about the meaning of the concepts being extracted by our mapping networks, whether they are just finding meaningless correlations in the many activations produced by our neural networks, or whether they are just, or, or whether they are really kind of being able to perceive these concepts as we perceive them to be. And so to investigate these, we used an occlusion procedure so that we can visualize where on a given image our mapping networks are responding when it's occluded. And so, for example, if we look at the first image in the slide, we can see a mapping network that was trained to identify wagons with circles on their insides. And we can understand that when the first wagon, which has a circle on its inside, is occluded, there is a sudden drop in the activation of these mapping network in the output sorry of this mapping network so through visual inspection of many different inputs to many different mapping networks we could understand that truly mapping networks seem to be properly identifying the visual features that embody each of the concepts that they are extracting so then we wondered about the origin of these concepts whether we could sort of pinpoint exactly which neurons of a neural network are necessary to extract a given concept and so to look into these, we develop this input reduce procedure that kind of searches for the smallest set of input, achieving the highest accuracy possible to extract a given concept. And through this procedure, we were able to, on average, reduce the amount of inputs from our new mapping networks by 95% while keeping the same or similar accuracy scores. So we can say that through this input reduce procedure, we were able to exactly pinpoint which neurons were necessary to extract a given concept. However, our end goal was to kind of be able to produce symbolical justifications that are human understandable, right? So in this image, I present the setting where an input is fed to a neural network and it's being classified as being a type B train. And we might wonder, why is it a type B train? And indeed, if we look at our background theory, we can understand that type B trains are either passenger trains or long freight trains, but we wouldn't know which. However, if we pay attention to the output of our mapping networks, we can observe that the concept of passenger train was not identified in the activations of this neural network, but the concepts of long train and freight train were. So using these observations together with our background theory, we can reason to produce a justification that states exactly this. The input was identified to be a long train and a freight train. Long and, tra and freight trains are long freight trains and those are trains of type B. So by feeding many different inputs to the three neural networks that we were studying, we were able to understand that on average, we could output complete sets of correct justifications for 90% of the inputs. However, I promise to come here today and talk about recurrent neural networks, right? So to look into this setting of recurrent neural networks, we kind of animated these extra in image data sets. So now we have these 60 frame long video animations 
and we can only see kind of a small portion of these trains at each time step. And so, of course, now we are dealing with recurrent neural networks. They are outputting a different result at each time step. And our goal now is to be able to justify these outputs at each time step. Of course, our background theory needed to be adapted to deal with this temporal side of our setting now. And we kind of run the same experiments that we have been here discussing today. And we found similar results across most of them, but I want to highlight two main differences that we found. And the first of them has to do with this kind of idea of the cost of establishing these mappings. So in this image here, I present the results of our mapping networks, but you can notice that I no longer present the results obtained when directly mapping to this concept from our data set, either by the use of a recurrent or a convolutional neural network. And this has due to the fact that we simply were unable to train such a neural network with such a small amount of training data. Notice that the training data here is in frames and not in videos. So what we noticed here that was very interesting is that we started to kind of ask ourselves whether should our mapping networks be recurrent themselves since we are now dealing with recurrent neural networks. And what we found was a small trade-off between uh, feed-forward architectures of mapping networks that seemed to perform a little bit better when we had very, very small amounts of training data and recurrent uh, mapping network architectures that seem to perform a bit better when we had some more training data available. And finally, when it comes to justifications, we were able to output almost 80% correct justifications on average. However, in about one third of our input videos, there, were, there was at least one incorrect justification being produced. And this is quite understandable, given that we are now dealing with 60 frame long videos, and we can understand that a single error in the output of a mapping network can kind of snowball throughout the video into us producing incorrect justifications in the later frames of the videos. So now we are looking at methods and techniques to kind of filter these uh, outputs of our mapping networks, and this kind of leads us into our future work. So now we are kind of asking ourselves whether we should kind of associate a degree of belief to the outputs of these mapping networks so that we can then talk about the justifications in which we have the highest belief. And we think this will help us in substantially reducing the number of incorrect justifications that are being produced. And furthermore, what we found that was very, very interesting is that when we started to look at the justifications that were systematically getting wrong and that the results from our mapping networks, we started to notice some patterns. So let's say, for example, that we were looking at the neural network trying to identify long freight trains. And we started to notice that it was getting wrong all of the short ones. So it ended up just learning freight train. So by looking at these results of our mapping networks and justifications, this was quite evident. And we believe that this points towards the idea that our mapping networks can be used as more than tools to help us produce symbolical justifications and also as tools to kind of debug and better understand the representations encoded inside of our neural networks. So this was my presentation for today. We kind of looked at a method to produce symbolical justifications that are human understandable for both feed forward and recurrent neural networks. We looked into this concept of mapping network. We saw that they were able to be trained with very few labeled data and able to extract the concepts as we kind of perceive them to be. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you.